millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. So some truth here. I've gone through most of my life letting my bank account balance dictate my mood. I've stuffed ATM receipts without even looking at them in crevices of my wallet, sat through amazing dinners fixated on how much money I don't have at the moment, and stopped myself from truly living life just because of that stupid number. Has this ever happened to you? Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Gaines. It will expand your brain. So I'm going to roll up my sleeves a little bit here and and dig in and share some things with you that are maybe a little bit hard to talk about. But I've spent years hiding from the fact that I just never wanted to look at my ATM receipts and know my bank account balance. And it sounds crazy, but I have this fixation, maybe you want to call it an OCD tendency to look at that number and then subtract in my head all of the things that I know need to come out from that account. And for some reason, I always then find myself in this panic situation. What am I doing? Is there going to be enough money? And it just takes over my whole entire life. It's crazy, this fascination with numbers, because it works really well when I'm trying to help other people with their numbers, but it doesn't work so well in my own situation. And because of that, I felt ashamed that I was this financial expert, and yet I was living this day in and day out, this fear around money, and it felt inescapable. And I also realized that other people felt the same way. It wasn't just me, and and it wasn't just because I was this expert, but there was this extra weight on my shoulder that because I am this expert, somehow I should know all the secrets or I shouldn't get trapped in these traps. But it happens. I think it happens with everyone. And I'm not really sure when it clicked, but after sitting across the table and having these endless Skype sessions, helping people with their own money, I realized that we all have something we're really ashamed of when it comes to our finances, our own version of the ATM receipt nightmare that I've lived for so many years. We all have a different version of that. And the problem is because 
money is so isolated and because we don't talk about it with other people and we we tend to build up these fear and this stress and this doubt and this sort of doom and gloom situation like I had with my ATM receipts. And then it just gets so big. It gets like this big, hairy monster when it really just doesn't need to be that big. I mean, now when I think back on not wanting to look at ATM receipts, I'm like, what what in the world was I hiding from? Because not looking at the receipt didn't really change anything, right? It didn't change the reality of the numbers on that receipt. It just I wasn't physically looking at them. So I guess I guess we do this mental thing where if we don't look at it or we don't talk about it, then it it doesn't exist. <laughs> Which is crazy, right? When I say it out loud, that's crazy because we know that to be not true. So I ta- started to just talk about my money more affirmatively from a really positive place. And I started giving it orders but also making sure that I wasn't putting too much pressure on myself to be perfect because I am totally type A overachiever. If you haven't already pegged me to be one, (laughs) I will just gladly admit to you that I am. And so for me, I don't like to do things unless I can do them perfectly, which of course doesn't work out too well in the world because there's no such thing as perfect. And it took me so many years. In fact, honestly, I still grapple with this day in, day out. So I'm not even going to pretend to tell you that I've perfected the non-perfection thing. It's something that I struggle with. But it's this balance that I found that if you can achieve it, things really start flowing for you no matter what your bank account balance is. And I started sharing this idea with my friends and family and friends of friends and basically anyone I could talk to and created this little movement of people waking up and saying that they were going to join me and take back their bank accounts right alongside with me. And it's funny because when I talk to people about this, it's like a light bulb goes off in their head when they start realizing, wait a minute, you're right. My bank account has had the control over me. It's had control over my mood or or my relationships or things I did or didn't do with my life. And I think when you verbalize it and you start saying it out loud, you realize how crazy it is. And I don't want to diminish whatever the bank account balance is for you because it's important. I'm not going to lie. We need money. We need money to live life. And I can't sit here and tell you that it's not important, but I can sit here and tell you that with some perspective in my own life and what I've seen through other people is There's a way to maneuver around it so that it is not in charge of you. And I know it's just words, right? It's just words to say you're going to take back your bank account or you're going to change something that you felt negative about in the past. You're going to start to speak positively over something in your life. But I have honestly, I swear on everything that it is really the moment when things started to change for me. And then I thought, well, if this is the case with me, I wonder if it can work with other people. And when I started to share this with other people, I started to see that hmm, it kind of started working with them too. And I didn't know what their bank account balance was. Some of them, of course I did, but it was all over the map, all sorts of different people. And I remember in the infancy of this podcast way back in 2015 and even 2016, if you've been listening since 2015, you get a gold star for the day. (laughs) But I was stuck in this kind of negative train of thought thinking, does this even matter? Where is this podcast going? And I spent honestly way too much time Again, this is not going to surprise you after I just admitted the perfectionism thing, but (laughs) I spent way too much time comparing how many downloads I had, where the podcast was featured, articles that the podcast was in, guests that were on the show, guests that weren't on the show that turned me down. I mean, even how I spoke on the episodes, I just criticized everything and I started to think, why am I doing this? Does it even make sense? I don't even want to look at the numbers. I don't want to look at anything. So I was going back to those same feelings that I had with my stupid ATM receipts, which by the way, I just want to say, 
to all the haters out there, we all have our own catchphrases that we use over and over. So if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, I'm sure you know what mine are. (laughs) I see so many different critiques for all sorts of podcasts in the uh, iTunes reviews where people say, oh my gosh, they say this word over and over and over again. Yeah, newsflash, we all do. We all have a word that we say over and over again. All right, so enough about that. (laughs) The point is I started to think differently. I thought, okay, I thought differently about my bank account balance and my ATM receipts, and things started to shift for me. I wonder if I can use that same logic in other areas of my life. And I remembered your face, and I remembered why you tune into this podcast, and also started to think about this podcast more like a business, and more importantly, valued what I was bringing to the podcast This is my voice. This is the way I like to talk about money. These are the things I think are important to share with you, mainly because these are the things I've lived in my own life, but also because these are the things I've seen in 15 years working with people. And plus that, not working with people, but running my own business since college, this is the patterns that I've seen. And I've just thought, well, nobody's really talking about these patterns, so let's just talk about them. But I've always felt like this vessel, really. I I don't know really any more than someone else. I'm just being me each episode and trying to think about what I would want to listen to and just come to the show, show up for you each Tuesday and Friday and ask you to join in with me, to listen to different subjects, to open your mind, to think about things differently. And so I started to shift from not being really concerned about what the numbers are, what the downloads are, any of that crap. Because in the end, honestly, it doesn't matter. If you've got a hundred people listening to your podcast or going to your website or whatever it may be, that's a hundred people that really care about what you're doing. You could have a million people and maybe out of those million people, maybe only a thousand people legitimately care. And I think that it's really easy to get so hung up in numbers, and I don't think you need to be this crazy OCD number person like I am to get hung up in the numbers, but no matter what that number is for you, it could be your bank account balance, it could be your salary, it could be the downloads on your podcast, it could be your weight, it could be any specific number that has impact that affects you negatively That is something that you can positively change just by thinking differently. And I know that sounds, again, so easy and so simplistic, but what if it actually is? I mean, that's a crazy thing to sit there and ponder and think about. What if it actually is? So things started to change when I changed my thinking you grew this podcast, not me. You grew this by telling your friends and then their friends and family. And then it turned into my full-time gig, which I could kiss your feet for because I actually really love podcasting. I never thought I would. I'm, I mean, it's this crazy thing, right? I'm talking into a microphone in a closet that is soundproof padded <laughs> and, uh, I can't see your face, but you can hear my voice. It's just really, it's this crazy thing. If you're a podcaster and you're listening, you know exactly what I mean. But this was just one example of how I took that same, that same process, I guess I would say, that I used for taking back my bank account. And I used that to take back other things in my life. And I could have easily fallen into the trap of thinking that, hey, I'm a certified financial planner. I have an MBA. I'm supposed to just manage clients' finances every day. That's what my degree says I can do. But I'm so much more than that. And when I stepped into that, when I stopped caring about those numbers, about that thing, even just when I dipped my toe in, things started to shift. They shifted in my mind. They shifted in this podcast. They shifted in my bank account. And so I started to see like, huh, This is a really fascinating process, this declaration of taking back your bank account. It's so much more than just taking back the numbers that are in your account. It's about taking back 
yourself, I think, and really tuning into what matters and the value you bring, your strengths, and just getting rid of those areas of stress and weakness that really have kept you tied up for so many years. Because for all of us, it's something. And it's usually something around money. Their money is such this big, hairy beast for all of us. And we're either trapped in our past mistakes or we're trapped in that number or we're trapped trying to get somewhere. For all of us, there's some level and we come in and out of it throughout of our life. It's not like you're stay shackled your whole life, God forbid. But there is a process in most of our lives that we go through. And so I want to bring to you and share with you this process that I went through because it was so freaking powerful for me. And then my other, I started to hear my other friends say, oh yeah, I'm taking back my bank account balance. I'm, ta- I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool because that is like creating this movement of people that are saying like, I'm not going to be tied up with whatever numbers in my bank account. I'm not going to get stuck there because that stuck point is what keeps all of us breeding more fear and stress and anxiety and not having conversation and honestly not taking those steps that we know we need to take that are going to actually change things. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to Nerd Wallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before Nerd Wallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. <laughs> I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hey, we'll hop back into the episode after a success story from Pam and Zion. They say, hey, Shauna, we've been listening to your show for about six months and honestly listening while we're going to couples therapy. We were getting into these big fights about money. I, Pam, would get mad at what Zion was spending. And since I handle the money in our relationship, I started to hold a grudge. Zion felt out of control and embarrassed that he wasn't as good at handling money as I was, and then he would get totally pissed off that I was getting upset at these little things. We had no flow, no conversations, just a bunch of fights about stuff that now seems really meaningless. 
So we went to therapy and our therapist told us to find a book or podcast or TV show or something that we could both have conversations around money and open up a dialogue. So we found your show after looking through other money shows and started listening to episodes and talking about them every weekend. We'd share what we learned, what we liked, what scared us. We'd even look at it as a time to look up guests that were on the show, sign up for apps, you name it, we did it. After about a month in, we realized we were communicating over money in a real way for the very first time, and we had not had one single fight. Our therapist even noticed. We were able to talk talk about really tough stuff in session around money and realized why we were getting into fights. I never connected that my upbringing and us being super conservative around money was why I would get mad at Zion over little teeny stuff. I just had never processed any of that. Anyway, it's changed our lives in a real way, and I wanted to thank you. I know it was us that did the work, but you allowed us to think about things and to enter into a conversation with each other. If you are someone listening right now and you've been fighting with your partner over money, I'd suggest this approach. It was great to talk about what someone else said about money and use that as a way to have our own conversations. Thanks, Shauna. Really, honestly, thanks. Pam and Zion, that is a great success story. Thank you for your honesty first, because I know writing that and talking about those things are really hard. We certainly don't want to talk about having money fights with our partner, let alone having to go to therapy about it. But the reality is that, and I know this from my own therapist, is that most of the couples come into therapy. In fact, you don't even have to come in with your partner, but most people come in to fight either about sex or about money. Those are the two most talked about topics. So if you're going to therapy talking about either one of those topics, you're in a really good crowd <laughs> because I myself have been there. But I think this is great what you shared. And and I love that the podcast then allowed you to have these conversations. And I'm sort of reading between the lines, but I think what ended up happening was that you were able to talk about money because I was talking about money. So you were more or less just commenting on what I said or what I guess said. And then that organically created this dialogue for you guys. So I just love that that happened. Thank you so much for sharing this. And look, when it comes to couples and money, you got to do whatever works. And fighting's not really a way to solve the problem. So if you're getting in fights, just think about what is it that you're actually fighting about? What is the source of that? Where does that come from? Think about your own money habits, your own money values. Think about your partners. Think about where those are coming from. And if you can diagnose what's underneath, you can usually stop those arguments from happening. So again, thank you so much for sharing. And I hope that encourages other couples to try the same thing. So it's not enough just to take back your account fully. You have to live and walk in some truths each day. And these are some of the truths that I figured out and that I've heard feedback from other people who have said, hey, Shauna, I'm going to take back my bank account too. So we've talked about this. We've gone into depth over this, but perfection is totally overrated. It is the hardest thing for me to not be a perfectionist, oh, particularly when it comes to my money. But if I'm going to be honest, it's really about anything in my life. You made a mistake. Great. Move on. And I still, from time to time, charge too much on my credit card. I still make some of those silly decisions that are definitely something that a perfectionist would not do. But I come from this this healthier place of, this is not a big deal. I'll just pay it off, give myself some grace because I know it's going to happen again. And I've I found talking to so many different people over the years that you'll get stuck in a mistake that happened in the past. And then you'll swear to yourself that you'll never make that mistake again, only to find out that you make that mistake again and you're kicking yourself. But that's just human nature. This is This is what we do. And and money is this fluid thing since it touches every aspect of our lives. Well, stuff's going to happen. We're going to make mistakes. So get rid of the idea that you have to be perfect or that you have to be perfect to start because that's something else I hear, which is just totally unfounded. 
Also, I focus on what I can control, which is actually a lot if you think about it. And I don't want to talk about control in a negative way, but control and really an ownership. This is my bank account. This thing belongs to me. So I should have some control over it. And I think when you think about it, I know you'll agree. So a few things that you can control. Checking in on your money each week to make sure that you're on track. Totally easy. You totally can control that, right? It's not going to change the number, but you can check in on it. Setting goals day in and day out. I think we set those New Year's Day goals, which are great. And then we all know within a month we've <laughs> that those have fallen off. But it's different when you set day in and day out goals. What is your goal for the day? It's something that I do every morning. I have a journal. I write in the journal, what is my goal for that day? And then I write five positive things that are going to happen in that day. Whether they happen or not, who knows? But I just send the day in with that intention that positive things are coming my way. Put as much positive motivation in your head as you can, whether that's listening to different podcasts that are all about positivity and pump you up. I'm a big fan of the Calm app. I don't know if you listen to it as well, but I listen to a lot of meditations, a lot of things just to get me motivated because I find what you put in your head, that is then what you believe. That is what bleeds out of you every single day, more or less. Another thing is knowing that your value, this is a big one, so I'm going to pause on this one. Knowing that your value is not attached to the number on your ATM receipt. Friend, this took me so freaking long to understand. It's a painful process for me, but I've come to understand that whether I have 10 bucks in my account or I have $10,000 in my account... I am still valuable and I cannot let that affect my mood because when I do, I have lost control of my bank account. And if I am taking back my bank account, I have to live that out every single day. Another thing is always looking for the X factor. So those money risks that could knock you off your feet and then create a plan around them. They could be big things. They could be little things. Maybe you just need to beef up your emergency fund. Maybe you need to focus on some networking so that you always have connections. So if you lost your job tomorrow, you could get a new job. Maybe you need to get better health insurance, or maybe you need life insurance, or maybe your car insurance sucks and you need to get a better plan. Uh, Maybe you just need to come up with an organizational system for how to handle your money every week. It could be Anything, anything for you that is keeping you stuck from feeling like you have more control over your bank account, those are the things you want to focus on. And having those tough money conversations with your honey or even yourself around money, just like Pam and Zion did in uh, the little snippet on today's episode, those tough money conversations, they're tough and they suck. (laughs) But once they're over, usually there is this beautiful shining rainbow because you've had the tough conversation. Finding a mentor or asking questions about things you don't understand. Even just getting up and starting somewhere. See, there's so many things that are actually in your control. This is just the tip of the iceberg. These are just the things rolling off my head, but there's so much that you can do. And also taking back your bank account is It's a declaration you make where you're saying, hey, bank account, you don't owe me. I get to decide the rules here. I get to decide what I save, what I spend, where you go, where you get to play. You're not dragging me around all stressed out, all full of anxiety. I'm the boss here. I know it sounds crazy, right? It sounds really crazy, but do it. Try it. <laughs> this stuff works. This this crazy declaration stuff. It moves your head from this place of being anxious and stuck and stressed out and afraid to a place of like, well, let me just try something. Let me see if this works. Let me just make one little step. And another big truth is that you don't 
have to or have to accept the same money story that your family or parents had. This is this is another big thing that I see a lot of people getting stuck in, and maybe you can relate. You can live life a different way. So for instance, my parents, they're great, amazing, wonderful, hip, funky, cool parents, but they're a real kind of get a solid job, get a big check, paycheck, and everything will be okay type of parents. They grew up in a completely different generation than I grew up in. Even my dad, who is a risk taker and my my mentor, does not understand this whole gig economy and all the ways that you make money without having to work traditional hours. And great. I don't have to own that or apologize for chasing after big dreams, nor do I have to explain what I'm doing with my money. It's funny, like I, I see so many different people have to explain to their family and they're in their 20s, 30s, and 40s what they're doing with their money. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? You're an adult, right? <laughs> Why are you having to explain this? We're all individuals. So why do other people always try and make us conform to their idea of life? It's crazy. And we do it. It's just human. I, I think we feel like we owe people something. But I'm going to give you a permission slip, a pass. You don't owe anybody anything other than yourself. And if you're married or in a committed relationship or you have a kid, you have somebody who's dependent on you. That's a different story. But your parents, your siblings, your friends, you don't owe them an explanation of anything, in my opinion, just my two cents. And you know what you should do. You've heard it a million times over. You've heard it on this podcast. You've heard it on any articles you've read. You hear it on the news. You know the steps, right? Save your money, know your expenses, set a budget, set your goals, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Great. Got it. But what if that doesn't work? Or what if you're saying, okay, I got that. What next? Throw all of that crap out. It's important, so I'm not saying abandon the ship on all of that because those are the foundational elements, but live in the truth that you have the tools you need to get you where you're going. Even if you have to ask some questions along the way, even if you don't know everything, I don't know everything, and I had to take a giant test to say that I knew everything about money, <laughs> and I still don't know everything around money, but for most of us, we're so hung up in the well, I've got to do these 10 steps with my money. I've got to check all of these boxes. This is the this is the only way that I can progress and be successful with my money. And that's just not real life because those things are likely what are keeping you stuck, keeping you from achieving the different goals that you have or keeping you from taking back your bank account. And there's no there's no secrets here. Yes, of course you got to save money, you got to know your expenses, you got to cover your risks. You got to do all that stuff that I know you know you got to do. But if that's keeping you on a hamster wheel, throw it out. Find something that works for you, something that's going to keep you motivated. It could be a mantra. It could be a picture of someplace amazing that you want to go to or live in, whatever it is for you. You somehow have to connect your head with the stuff you want to do. And when you make that connection, when you think of it like a magnet, when those two things stick together, then the steps of how you actually get there and achieve that become really easy. It's like, oh yeah, of course, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll ask this person, maybe I need to research this. It becomes a lot easier. So I have this image of a house and a place that I want to live in. My Pinterest board is littered with shots of home interiors, home interiors and recipes. <laughs> Not money stuff, just the other stuff that I love in life. So my idea is is nothing fancy, but some place, some home that really inspires creativity and makes me feel peaceful. I'm thinking like Pacific Northwest or someplace like that, like a little cool, but these amazing summers, nature. And I don't want a big house. Honestly, I've given up on the idea of a big house. I had a big house when I was in my 20s. And in my opinion, it was completely overrated because it was expensive and I could go on forever. That's a whole other episode. But I want something manageable, like 1,500 square feet, maybe even 2,000 square feet. And because I know how expensive a big house is, it's just not my vision. 
could be your vision. Your vision could be you want this big glamorous house. Great. That's great. That's you. You do you. I'm going to do me. But what I'm saying is that this vision then keeps me focused. It's not a checklist or you know a guilty list of you need to do this each week with your money. It's something that is positively motivating me. So that's how I took back my bank account. I stopped letting it control my mood or determine if I was successful or worthy. And I certainly stopped letting it control where my money went. You hear me on that one? I created a plan. Here's how much we need to live each month, the bare minimum. If you don't know your bare minimum, just figure it out. Figure out your bare minimum. It's going to help you a lot immensely. Anything over that bare minimum goes places. It either goes to our emergency fund or pay off debt or save for a trip or towards my business or for taxes, et cetera. It has a place, it has a home, has a place that it goes. And I just go back to my Pinterest board and I remember I took back my bank account. And one day I'm going to sit on that porch sipping some amazing green tea or cocktail because I don't drink coffee. I know, I know I'm crazy, but I don't like the taste of coffee. Is there is there anybody else out there like me that does not like the taste of coffee? I feel like I'm sort of alone in isolation. So today I'm asking you, join me in this little movement I started where we all freaking take back our bank accounts. Shoot me an email. I met Shauna at mmoneypodcast.com or tag me on Instagram at Shauna Game. Tell me how you're taking back your bank account. Let's all do this together. We all deserve to live a life from a place of freedom, not being dragged around by our bank accounts aimlessly, wishing we could do more in life. No way. I've lived that version. That version sucks. Now I'm on the other side of it. And yes, there are still plenty of moments that suck, but I'm going to tell you it's way better. So get up, get pumped and take back your bank account. Thanks so much for checking out this episode and a big thanks to our sponsors that make this show possible. Remember to subscribe in your favorite podcast player so you never miss an episode. But before you leave, I wanna empower you to embrace where you are today, the good and the not so good. And remember, nothing lasts forever. Just keep taking small steps every day and remember how awesome you truly are.